Catch me outside for a tussle. I'll show you how I punch a door. What you guys need to remember is that discipline is a verb. Something you do, not something you have. Hey guys, this is Carlos Morales with Real Sales Dynamic and Pacific United Power. Today, we're gonna to be responding to some of the comments that you guys have been leaving. First off, I wanna say thank you guys so much for growing this channel. One of the big things with Real Sales Dynamics was we didn't wanna just display how solar is sold. We wanted to show how solar should be sold. That's what we do here for free, giving you great quality content so you can get better at selling in the future. And if you guys are stuck in one of the situations, remember to hit us up in the submissions board if you guys are looking to sell in places like Florida and California. If you're outside those markets, there are other opportunities available that we can link you guys up with. So for the first comment here, first comment is, Solar is a scam at the moment. Where do I go with this statement? So it's really interesting. Solar as a whole, PV solar installed in people's homes, hasn't been really popular except for the last 10 years. As a result, every single great innovation that gets brought up, whether it's elevators being used in businesses, cars being used for personal transportation, every single step of the way through innovation, people call things a scam. The truth of the matter is, as long as your utility respects net metering, i.e. they pay you back for any excess power that you create on your home, then it is beneficial for you to go solar if you don't have a bunch of trees on your house, if the panels are gonna fall through your roof, and if you're working with a quality company that ensures that over the course of this next 25 years, all of your electricity needs are being met. Speaking of that, the next comment that actually came up is, solar companies are notorious for going out of business. What happens to the 25 year warranty if you are no longer in business? That's a great question. Daily Smelly. I like that form. Well, you know, the types of words that you say in any given moment can speak into actual reality. So I don't know if calling yourself smelly is a very good idea. Like I was saying on the 25 year uh, warranties on our products, the truth of the matter is that a lot of solar companies don't necessarily go out of business. They actually get sold to other solar companies. You had that with Vivint buying up Sunrun. You have Solar City getting purchased out by Tesla. The reason being is that with these 25 year contracts, there's a lot of money to be made. So in the same way, if one mortgage company takes over the loan of another mortgage company, they can't just suddenly change all the rates and plans and everything else. It's the same way with solar. They just take on those warranties. You also, in most cases, have a manufacturer's warranty on a lot of these systems. Those manufacturers are not going into business anytime soon. If you wanna take a look, go ahead and look up Enphase in the stock market. It's went up quite a bit. Is it good to always assume the sale? Yes. So another question here, what's y'all's take on he who speaks less sells more? That's a really good point. One of the things we try to teach is to allow points in the conversation where the customer can ask questions. That doesn't mean that they're asking questions the entire time because then they're leading the conversation. You leave room for those openings. And with those openings, when they're speaking their own truth to you in those situations, you guys can connect. Also refining the way you speak, editing the way that you speak, writing down your entire pitch to make sure there's no forced words at all can help you sell so much better. And just one last point on it. If you speak really, really quickly, it's a good way to show passion with someone. You speak incredibly fast. But the thing is, is that when you wanna speak with strength, you slow down. So there's a rhythm to your talking. There's a rhythm to your pitch that keeps them captivated and allows you to transfer as much knowledge to them as you possibly can. Okay, another comment. Every time I tell someone I'm gonna start solar, they say it doesn't work anymore. Is that true? Well, that's pretty vague. Uh, it depends on your market. There's been various markets in places like Texas, for instance, have actually kicked out uh, various utilities. And in California right now, there's a massive change that's occurring in April regarding net metering that's gonna shift the way that people are selling out there. But in California, people will still be able to sell solar. In places like Florida, where I'm selling, we have a very long journey ahead of us where we're gonna be able to sell for the next decade. So it all just depends on the market that you're selling in. There's also this fear out there regarding interest rates going up, meaning for financing a product for customers, it's getting more and more difficult to show savings day one. Well, at the same time as those interest rates are going up and those prices are going up for solar, so are the utility rates. Everything in the entire market is relative to one another. So if the utilities go up 20% and solar goes up 15%, solar is still a better situation for customers. Unless a meteor literally hits your house, solar is still going to work. Another comment, why waste your time going back three plus times? 
Just learn how to close a deal without wasting so much time. This has to do with coming back to sales after you've already met with the customer, maybe not signing all the financing right then and there. There are certain situations in which a comeback makes sense. Let's say the wife isn't there. Yes, I can bully the husband in order to sign up that day, but the moment that husband who's like tries to start explaining all the loan terms to his wife without me being there, she's gonna look at him like, oh no, you signed up for a scam. We're trying to create the best possible customer experience as well as helping people sell more deals. If that means you have to come back out in order to meet with both parties, that's gonna create for a stickier deal. Until we're at the point where I have panels literally in my car, as soon as I knock a door, I can just throw panels up there. There's going to be some wiggle room with this. This isn't alarms where I can just pop a hole into someone's wall right after signing them up. It can take sometimes four days to get an installation. It can come up to anywhere between three and four weeks, depending on your install partners and the permitting time. So the better informed they are and the better you are at teaching, the less you need to be afraid of comebacks. How well do you think bringing the name of the homeowner to the door. This actually piggybacks on another thing about what's the door knocking app that we use. We actually use SalesRabbit, the link is below. SalesRabbit allows us in order to be able to see people's customers' names, uh, potential credit scores, and a lot of other additional information as well as mark really good notes. I found it's a great way to break preoccupation because people like hearing their names more than any other word in the entire dictionary. I, I find it a way to just kind of create that, wait, what? Yeah, my name is Martin, what's going on? Right, versus are you the homeowner or are you the renter? Right, that's just an annoying thing to say out loud. So, hope that helps. Hey Carlos, I'm looking to get into solar sales, but I'm looking at different solar companies. What's a good solar company in Tampa Bay, Florida to work for? I don't know, I mentioned it like a thousand times that if you're looking to sell in Tampa, just uh, hit the submission form. Hector, I, I hope to see you at the next solar boot camp. Speaking of, we are having solar boot camps in the next uh, two weeks in Tampa, Florida. It's about six hours long. We'll teach you everything you know in order to sell solar. Hit us up on the submission board. So to make you go away, just say I'm renting, got it. Yes, all right. Next one, my company doesn't allow door-to-door -door sales, which they did, but this was frustrating, but definitely entertaining educational. Well, thank you, I'm sorry to hear that it's frustrating. It sounds like you're working for a company who doesn't like selling. Over 80% of sales within solar right now are actually done door-to-door, -door, so if they're not taking that opportunity to meet customers face-to-face, -face, then you should probably change that. If you've already changed things about your life to make it better, then the second step is changing the company that you're working for. It's literally called direct marketing. I love this one. Hey, I'm very interested in door-to-door -door and I wanted to ask some questions if you don't mind. Do I need a college degree to become a door-to-door? -door? What does door-to-door -door pay well? No, you do not need a college degree in order to sell solar. We have people who are 18 years old straight out of high school and then we have other folks who have master's degrees and doctorates. One of the great things about door knocking is it's the great equalizer. You have people on culture of the margins from all different walks of life who if they are given the tools can make the best of their lives. As far as how it pays, incredibly well, but it all depends on you. And that's the great portion of door to door sales. At the end of the day, the responsibility lies on you to pick the right company and to do the right types of sales tactics in order to succeed. We are hunters. We are not grocery shoppers. Another one real quick, funny how you went from saying it's a credit fail to a same day. If you're not working with a company that has multiple lenders, you're making a mistake. If one lender says no, another lender can often say yes. So that's why it's really good to be in a position where you're working with a broker company where, where you can work with multiple install partners. You guys should clean up your appearances and wear company logo shirts and knock with your iPads to look more official. Other than that, you have a strong sales pitch. First off, I have my logo on me. But if I'm running around knocking doors in a yellow shirt that says solar on it, they're gonna close that door quicker than the president's coloring book whenever the press shows up. It's okay as long as you look clean cut to wear normal clothes because it looks like you're supposed to be there, not you're supposed to sell something there. That's one of the silliest adages in solar is that you need your brand every single little portion of your body. That's for recruiting reps, not for actually recruiting customers, which is what we care about here. But thank you for saying it's a strong sales pitch. Notice 1149. I love when people like timestamp different things. You can tell they're taking notes. It's a funny thing where I've, I've chatted with multiple solar reps who I've brought in who are like, I have like six pages of notes on one of your solar pitches. I'm like, you know, you can just call me or we, you can just hit us up, but I like when people take notes. His accents start shifting to mirror the homeowners more. Great tactic on the doors because you end up being more like the person you're talking to. I'm fixing it. So shifting the way you're speaking, slightly adjusting it, depending on the mannerisms of the customer, allows them to feel less like they're being sold to and more like they're talking to a friendly neighbor. That doesn't mean you start throwing on a big accent as start as you start talking if you're not actually from the South, because that probably sounded super offensive to someone in Florida. But it means that the mannerisms and the way and the pace that you're speaking can mirror that of the customer to help out. You look sketchy talking about drones and stuff, W2F, LMAO, brah, brah. We talk about drones. 
It, it, drones aren't that scary because they take them out of the actual bag. It's a portion of whenever I'm going to get a lead. In a lot of cases, when someone gets me the bill, I'm gonna pull up my drone, start taking some photos. That's gonna demonstrate that you're a professional and expert a lot more than having a shirt that says go solar on it. Another comment here, annoying repetition. When you're initially knocking the door, the person isn't listening to a lot of what you're saying. They're just trying to ascertain whether or not you are a threat. For the longest period of human history, if someone showed up on a boat that you didn't know, that means someone was gonna die. So there's still those evolutionary flashbacks to people's houses whenever someone knocks their door. Repeating things three different times can then slightly lock it into their head. If you guys haven't experienced that, you probably haven't done sales before because you won't believe how many times you end up having to repeat things no matter how clearly you state them. Door knockers are ruining the solar market. Try real advertising or being a better company and you won't have to do that. Ugh. Okay, door-to-door uh, -door sales has been around since doors existed. At one point, some guy said, I'm gonna go punch that door to get a hold of that other person, which is awesome. I'm so glad that guy invented it. Um, direct marketing, which is door knocking, is the way that the majority of solar sales go on in the country. It's the way the majority of alarm sales for the longest period of time went on in the country until it became norm. Dish sales, cable sales, um, all of it came through door knocking. So if you're mad at door knocking, I guess you're mad about all the technological innovations that have came to you to become normal over the course of the last 40 years. Catch me outside for a tussle. I'll show you how I punch a door. Okay, another question. You can add more solar to houses that come with solar installed? I, T-H-O-T, -T, you couldn't. You can. Uh, so there are situations in which you wanna add on additional panels on someone who's already been installed in their home. Again, always take a look at the regulations of your utilities before you do something like that. The reason being is, let's say you had a little abuela living in a house, then someone else buys the house, right? They only need eight panels for their home, but you have a full family and you have an electric car. Electric cars can take anywhere between eight to 16 additional panels on their house. So you can add on additional panels and work with them on the situation. It works differently state by state, company by company. So always make sure you're checking all the necessary uh, regulations in your areas. Jeffrey Judd, never wasted so much time in my life. Moved across the country away from my precious son who was five years old. Knocked 1500 doors a week for two months, made zero deals. I gotta be honest, adding in the words precious in there makes me not trust the 1500 doors as much. Um, there's a bit of hyperbole in these YouTube comments. It's pretty, it's a, it's a very normal thing because everything feels really dramatic and awful in your life. The truth is, is that every single salesperson has to be their own self-help guru when they're actually on the doors. You have to do some of the training yourself because at the end of the day, the responsibility lies on you in those situations. There are people who have the charisma of wallpaper paste and maybe shouldn't have ever been in this industry as a whole. We run our company, it, one of the things for us is just we try to assess quickly if someone's actually gonna be a good fit. There's a lot of people who are just gonna end up being bad at door knocking because of just the way that they chat or the type of life they had in the past. So I've never been the type of person to recommend this job to any single person. Um, that would be an impossibility. It'd be saying like anyone can join the, uh, the NBA or anyone can just be a doctor. It depends on your life and what's going on at that time. But I've never seen an industry where people with more mixed backgrounds can succeed as long as they're given the right tools and they use those tools for success. Bros scamming grannies. <laughs> Bros scamming grannies. You know what's a scam? Your utility rate's going up 10 to 20% every single year and whenever you sell your house, you don't get any of that money back because you were just renting your power from the utilities. You know what's not a scam? Actually owning things. Whenever you sell your house, you get that money back. Whenever you sell your car, you get that money back. Whenever you sell your utilities or the power station, the solar system itself, you get money back. I guess this guy just believes that equity is a scam. Owning things, return on investments is a scam. Some people you just can't help. Casper killed you. Ima. Ima is not a word. I'm going to is, that's all. Okay, I'm gonna try the fireball pitch tomorrow and we got solar. All right, I am shocked at how many people that I met at the door-to-door -door convention in Utah, you guys should make it to the next one next year, told me that they've used the fireball pitch to success. It's really, really funny. If you guys wanna see it, it's on the video. But by the way, you can find the video here. It was just a joke, guys. But if it makes you guys some money, that makes me really, really happy. It makes me laugh. And that's part of why we do this. Yeah, and apparently it was vetted by some guys in California who were mad that I used it at some point, even though I didn't know anything about them. So I'm not giving them credit because they were jerks. Scary, yikes, but small price to pay for big bucks. You don't waste money on expensive solar leads. Good stuff. Thanks for the comment, bud. Um, it's not that scary. Meeting random strangers and making friends, collecting autographs, it's not the scariest thing in the world, um, but there are skill sets that you kind of need to know in order to be better at it. But if you guys don't have a problem talking to a random person at Walmart, you're probably not gonna have too much of an issue doing door knocking. So biased with the credit score. 
LMAO, don't judge a book by its cover. Totally true. I work in mostly uh, lower to moderate income communities as a whole. Because one of the big reasons why is because they are more likely to be motivated by immediate savings in certain cases. It doesn't mean just because they're in a low income community that they suddenly have bad credit. There's a lot of things that happen in life. But when I do make little hyperbolic jokes in these, these situations, it is for the lulls. I've had well over a thousand sales at this point in mostly lower income communities. So I'm definitely not biased against them. Yes, I love long vids. Katie Valentine. Thanks, Katie. Great training. New guys, please don't plan your entire day around that 10 a.m. guy. You'll pull your hair out. Low hanging fruit first, then reconnect with people like him. Absolutely true. There are plenty of time wasters out there when you're knocking doors. We like to call them tire kickers. People who are just going to tell you that they're going to book an appointment with you and never actually do it. Part of getting better at this job is learning who to edit out and who to fire as a customer. Not every single person deserves your time. Remember that your time is worth money and the better you get at solar sales, the more money each one of those hours is worth. Can you show your fails, Carlos? You're not perfect. Well, I couldn't find someone to say no that day, so I, I guess I was. But also, uh, there's a lot of other videos that we posted where you can see the ups and downs of myself and other reps in the solar industry as a whole. We wanna create a whole picture for you guys on what your career can actually look like when you get into solar. That's why we give you all this content for free. So make sure to click all the little videos to learn more. That about wraps it up. Remember, if you're looking to switch companies or get into solar as a whole, hit us up on the submission boards. You can find me on Instagram at Wolf of Solar. Make sure to click subscribe so you can find more stuff like this. Here's a little fact, guys. 80% of the people who are watching these videos right now are not subscribed. It makes us sad. If you guys want to know more, now you know how. And click one of the two little videos. YouTube thinks you're going to like it a lot.